Hello and welcome to the week that changed the world, day one, Monday. We're talking about a particular Monday. This is some three years into the ministry of Jesus of Nazareth. He has been teaching and healing and doing many great things for such a long time and, and uh, mentoring his disciples. But now things are changing. He's, he's come to really the, the last days, and he knows it. He's coming to the very last week of his life before facing the cross. He has entered Jerusalem on what we call Palm Sunday. And now we find ourselves the very next day on Monday. And we get a glimpse into what he was thinking and saying and teaching. All of this we find in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, from verse 20 to 26. And we will visualize that portion of Scripture using the LUMO Project Gospel of John video. For just a moment, I'm going to pray that God will give us understanding as we hear the Scripture being read and see it enacted for us. Dear Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray that you will open our eyes to understand who this Jesus is and how we might get to know him or get to know him better. Help us to understand what your word says and what it has to do with us, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. This was a special time of year for the Jewish people the Feast of Passover. It was coming in just a few days, and people from all over the Roman Empire and, and other parts were, were arriving in Jerusalem to partake of that feast. And included among these people were what, is, what are mentioned as Greek people. As it says in verse 20, there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. And these people seem to be quite curious. They went to Philip, who is from Galilee, and so he's kind of uh, maybe a little easier for them to talk to as an outsider himself. He's not from Jerusalem, but whatever the reason, they went to Philip and asked, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. We don't know why they're curious. We don't know what they've heard. But obviously the word has gotten around that they, this Jesus is somebody that they want to meet. And so they go up to one of Jesus' disciples, Philip, and ask if that's possible. And so it's quite interesting what happens next. Philip then goes to one of the other disciples, Andrew. Andrew and Philip together go in to talk to, to, uh, talk to Jesus and ask whether these Greeks can see him. And of course, the reply that Jesus gives is quite interesting because it wasn't a very encouraging reply from one standpoint, a little bit mysterious, in fact. But these people are curious. I don't know how committed they are, that whether they're, you know, they're thinking about becoming his followers or if they're thinking about something else entirely. They are curious. They must have heard some uh, interesting stories that made them want to seek him out. But Jesus uh, says something that brings us right up to where we are in the whole story. Jesus knows that his end is coming soon. 
And so he replies and says, you know, the time has come for, for me to give my life, to die. And, but he says it in such an unusual way. He says that the time has come for the Son of Man, that is me, the Messiah, to be glorified. And he doesn't quite explain what that means, to be glorified, but it's, it's a way he talks about this. And he says this, I tell you the truth, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And this is a hint as to what it means for Jesus to be glorified. It's looking ahead to his death. And Jesus is looking ahead to his death as that grain of wheat that falls to the ground and dies. But his death, we see it has the hope of producing much more fruit afterwards. But there's much more here. It's not just about Jesus and his death. He then in turn, you know, applies it to those Greeks that are interested in meeting him. And perhaps you're one of those people that has some interest in Jesus. You would really like to meet him if you could. But Jesus says this after his word about the grain of wheat. Whoever loves his life will lose it. While whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. So here's a challenge laid out for us, for all of us, to not hold on to our lives, to realize that there's actually something more, more important, and that is to find true life where it is found, eternal life, and that eternal life is found in Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus himself has said this. That eternal life is knowing God and knowing Jesus Christ, his son. If you love your life, if it's all that's important to you, then you will be the loser for it. In another place, Jesus says, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own self? And so it's important that we get things in perspective and realize that the one who made us and who sent his son into this world to die for our sins, to restore to us that eternal life that was intended for us, that we lost way back in the Garden of Eden. There is nothing more important than to come to faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus says, whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one serves me. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains, never becomes more. But if it dies, it produces many others. Its life is reproduced, yields a rich harvest. That life which it possesses, that it releases in death, is released in resurrection. He was that sinless, spotless grain of wheat who came to be planted by his father at Calvary. He came into this world as God incarnate to live that quality of life that allowed of no explanation but the father in the son, without whom said he, I can do nothing. But having for 33 years demonstrated in the sinlessness of that humanity all that he is God intended when he first made man he could have gone back to heaven to be there forever alive because death is the wages of sin though only a man in his sinlessness he could have gone back to heaven and left us with nothing but the example of a beautiful life that could only mock us in our attempt to imitate him as the law can only mock us in our attempt to fulfill its demands. But if it dies, said the Lord Jesus, if I'm prepared on your behalf to forfeit that life that man lost in Adam and allow my Father in resurrection to restore that life to me, that life released through my death in resurrection will be shared with you.
die, that we might be forgiven. But He lives to restore to us that life for which man was made. But you see, there's not only a cross for Him; there's a cross for you and a cross for me. Unless we're prepared to die to what we are, we will never ever become what we were intended to be. But that life that is yours now, by virtue of who He is, living where He does in your heart, is a life that's to be released through death. That that life, His life, might be released in resurrection, shared with others. Chosen me. I've chosen you. I have appointed you that you might bear fruit and keep on bearing, and that your fruit may be lasting. Oh. Uh-huh. 
I hope this time was helpful for you. Join us again on Tuesday for the week that changed the world. May God bless you.